Hello again, my friends. This is Kanita, and I greet you warmly, warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. Praise His holy name, yes. <laughs> well, as you can tell by the sounds, I'm uh, still on the road, heading home again. It's uh, about a quarter after seven. Uh, we had a uh, customer needed a uh, case, case, a special add-on, I guess you call it. I had to go back to Dayton after I did some of the uh, areas north of town and, and got my Cincinnati stuff all prepped out and ready to go for tomorrow. That's the one advantage when the weather turns cold is that uh, I can get my uh, one of my bigger days and get it started a little bit early and, and get it set aside and ready to roll. So all I have to do is jump in in the morning, load up and go. And that saves me a couple hours in the morning, which uh, when it comes to uh, the metro area like Cincinnati, which is much bigger than Columbus or Dayton or any of the others I go to uh, here in Ohio, uh, if I can get through certain key spots before the rush hour, that saves me a couple extra hours on the back end. And sometimes that's the difference between coming home at uh, 7 or 8 o'clock or dragging home at uh, 11, 30 or 12, because that's happened a few times, more than a few times. <laughs> And as we're heading into wintertime, when the bad weather hits and the snow hits, it'll happen a few more times, I'm sure. Well, it's good to be back with you again, my friends. I enjoy the uh, chance to get together with you again when I'm on the road. It, uh, it is the bright spot of my day. Anytime the Lord lays something on my heart and I feel the need to come to you when I'm on the road. I never know for sure what's going to happen on one of these because there are no notes or anything else. I usually have notes or something written out and run from page to page when I'm at home or maybe uh, I've got something on the computer and a couple scribbles here and there. I, I kind of am crazy, you know, when I get uh, when I get inspirations or ideas uh, and I'm the same with poet, poems that, that come, you know, as, I'm, as I study the word, these, these things just pop, pop right up, you know, and and I tend to write them down on anything that's close by, you know, envelopes. Uh, I don't use tissue paper anymore. I, I, not that I'd never tried. It's just my pen just goes right through it and it doesn't do any good. So so I don't use that anymore. But uh, any kind of thing, the backs of other, other sheets of paper I've written on, uh, uh, some of my bills, you know, I have my electric bill where I had to kind of explain to the lady what was on there. And, you know, <laughs> well, yeah, that's how I am. I'm kind of like the absent-minded professor, I suppose. If you saw my desk, you'd understand. But uh, something interesting happened to me, you know, as I was uh, studying the Word this week. Uh, did you ever have an old story that you read and you knew, you knew by heart, you had read it over and over again, you loved it, it and it... Uh, everything you wanted in, in a story it's just it's just uh, well you understand what I mean you almost knew all the words of it all the settings and the phrases and so after a time though as as you move on to to other things in your life and other other stories other events uh, you tend to lose lose focus on on these ones that were something that, that once were very important to you and you don't go back and study them so much because you're being led into new areas and anyway you know the story you know it by heart and you read it over and over again so you don't really think about it much it's there and when it comes up uh, it comes up but you know I went back last night to an old story in the Word of God one of the parables of our Lord and, you know, like most of the rest of you, I've studied these things a hundred times since uh, since I first began awakening to the fact that uh, that there was a real God and that he had called me out for some, for some reason whatsoever I didn't know or couldn't figure out. But, you know, once we begin the search, we search and we search. And so I searched the scriptures and... And anything else that, that, that could line up with it. And, and one of the stories out of the scriptures that always touched me the most because I could identify there with, with the character uh, was the story of the prodigal son. 
And like the rest of you, I identified with the sun because when I first read it, of course, I was a young man. And it was easier to identify, I guess, with the young man. But you could see all the characters very clearly there, the older brother, the father. But it seemed like a parable about a headstrong young man who had followed after his instincts in his flesh and gone astray. And about his decision whether to come back home to the house of his father. And the consequences thereof of that decision. But as I read this again last night, a whole new character stepped forward to me. A whole new vision of this parable just kind of jumped right out at me. And that's what I'm going to try and share with you now. Now, you know how I am when I get to rambling on and talking without any kind of notes or anything, so bear with me a little bit. I'll do the best I can. <laughs> There's another character here. A character that's almost behind the scenes. Yet he is the dominant, overbearing character of the parable. And it's not the son. It's not the brother. It's the father, my friends. The one line that tells you everything you need to know. When our Lord says, and his father saw him from a long way off. Now you know, to most of us that, that wouldn't mean a whole lot, but you know, I am older now than when I first read this. I am, uh, I am a father of grown children. I am a father of grown children that have for a time gone astray and been away and apart from the family. So when I hear our Lord's words and I read this and says he saw him afar off, I see a picture there. I understand a man who has been living in grief because a great light of his life, a beloved son, has gone away. And he does not know where he is, how he is doing, if he is alive or dead. He's heard nothing for months on end. He asks servants to check as they go by if anyone has caught word of him. But nothing comes back. He sees him afar off because, my friends, every morning for months on end, this man has walked out in the morning up to the rise overlooking the cart path and the footpath that come up to his property. He can see them both there. And he stands there. And now since he's had a seat bench put in probably, he sits there and he watches and he waits. And every now and then again, he'll see a figure coming up the path and his heart will beat a little bit. But no. No, it's not the one. And this is a regular thing. His friends begin to mock him, saying, get over it. Your son was a fool. You have other sons. Live your life, man. I can hear them. But this son was special. Perhaps he was the child of his elder age, beyond the age when most men expect to have children. Perhaps his brothers were 10, 12, years older than him or more and had been grown men for many years and this had been the light of his father's house the joy of his heart and life without him it's just not been the same I can see him as he sits at dinner looks at the empty chair or even if it is Occupied by someone else, he knows whose seat it is. I can see him walking to his room in the house 
going by his son's room. Maybe walking in, sitting down on the bed, tidying up, just kind of remembering. I can hear him praying, trying to intercede for his son as best he can. Yes, my friends, this is the story of a father whose heart was broken by a son he loved so, but whose love would not let go, could not let go. So every morning, he sits on that bench, And then one day, one day, way off, way off, he sees a figure, and his heart leaps, his heart leaps within him. He recognizes the walk. He would know it anywhere. It's him, it's him. And he gets up and he walks and he stumbles and he tries to run and he gets out and he, he sees his son and before his son can get his speech out of his heart the father's love envelops him in his arms he puts on new robes robes of his house, home and his house his house is righteousness and he puts the ring the ring of sonship back upon his hand. He hears the apologies, but he cares not in his heart. All he knows is my son that was lost is found. The one I love who is dead is alive again. This is the story of a father's love. This is what I saw when I read an old story that I thought I knew. And it blew me away because it's right there. Maybe it takes being an older man with sons. But I think it was something more. This is a story of the Father's love told to us in an earthy, human form as much as it is possible to show the love of God in the form of a man in a tale. This was it. My friends, I urge you, go back and read this story again. See if you do not see in the life and the longing and the love of this man the love of your heavenly who gave all to ransom you. You know, it says in his word, our Lord's own words, said the angels rejoice in heaven when one of his lambs who has gone astray comes home. Is this picture of a heavenly father so very different from that picture of a rejoicing household? I think not, my friends. I think not. Well, just a few thoughts I wanted to share with you. Coming into West Jefferson here, about 10 miles outside of Columbus, I've got to uh, stop at the grocery store. I've got to buy cat food. I, I had a cat standing right on my uh, right on my chest this morning as I got up and got ready to go, and he pretty much told me, uh, "You get cat food, bud, or uh, don't come home." You know. So it's, it's don't come home without it, so I better not. <laughs> I have to keep peace. My friends, I love speaking with you. I love sharing these moments with you. I love the living God that I serve. <laughs> Life is good, my friends. You have a wonderful evening. I'll be back with you later to... Uh... Until the next time, my friends. Have an absolutely wonderful evening or day.
in our risen Lord, for it's all there, all in him, waiting for you. Amen. Praise Almighty God.